You ready? There is a connection between the paranormal, UFOs, and the myths of ancient history. The clues are scattered across the landscape from a forbidden past. Maybe even in your own backyard. There is a connection between the true nature of our reality, consciousness, and the unexplained. I'm Carl the Crusher. Let's explore the unknown. We're going to go to that park house over here. This is Mr. Bigelow's private office. This whole place is crazy. Here we are. So we're going to be pulling up on the saloon. Over handle, um, after 1900, they started uh, wrapping them with the leather braided metal. One of the main areas right here. So you can see it's kind of the band is small, but the, the band is larger right here. There's a lot of activity in that seven point, seven point whatever range, which is the Schumann frequency, 7.3, it's right here up to 7.8, which is exactly in Schumann. So between seven and eight hertz is the prime spot for remote viewing, altered spot, the right. positive altered states of consciousness, clairvoyance, clear audience, you name it, and out of body experience. With your device right now on top of something that's transmitting a signal? Possibly. It's as loud in infrasound as if we were sitting at a concert right now. If we were sitting at a, a Metallica concert, this is, this is what it sounds like right here. Somebody's done it before. Someone's done it before. A lot of times. There you go. Getting a little bit of my reflection coming off. Holy f balls. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, you getting this? Yes, okay, dude. Okay, jumping balls. TikTok. Um, <laughs> this is not normal. <laughs> What did you get more? Hot, a huge signal under right here, dude. Yeah, dude. I think you've got a void underneath with something under there. So he's putting on the EEG device that will read. It's basically capturing information. Chris is lit up in theta like a Christmas tree right now. There's like a thousand lightning storms blasting in the face. And then I saw my father, my son being born. Like, and like, like shocks of life, like it was intense. That was intense. So the gateway experience or gate, uh, gateway method came from the Monroe Institute, which is um, I don't if you know go to CIA.gov and type in gateway experience, and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. CIA.gov. Yeah, CIA's <laughs> website. Watch that. that and they website. have it. Yeah. But they, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, it's the Monroe Institute. They were partnered up with the Stanford Research Institute guys, this NIDS, who was all up here too. And uh, so they, it's, it's basically just been like consciousness research, trying to get people into astral projection in various states. But they were also using um, some of the Monroe tapes yeah. privately published for Army INSCOM to do remote viewing, you know, yeah. you know, the remote viewing state. And the thought is that after that point, the Monroe Institute became basically a money line. Yeah. But the methodology and the technology actually works. It's just whether or not it's been tainted. Let's go over some historical context so everyone understands what we're about to do. Here's our team standing at Mount Wilson Ranch in front of the motel, the same motel where Bob Bigelow took the NIDS team and had his paranormal encounter with the ghost shaman in motel room one. Here you have Hal Putoff, Jacques Vallée, Colm Kelleher, and Bob Bigelow and the rest of the team standing in the same spot. We also have Bob Bigelow, Jacques Vallée, and Hal Putoff standing above the meadow at Mount Wilson doing some kind of research there. Follow Hal Putoff throughout this story. It gets interesting. We've got Hal Putoff, Kit Green, Russell Targ, and Pat Price in the next photo. These guys invented remote viewing and built the psychic spy program at Stanford that was used by the CIA. They were remote viewing everything from Russia to UFOs to Skinwalker Ranch and beyond. Hal Putoff, Phil Corso, George Knapp, and Colonel Alexander. NIDS, Bass, ATIP, Project Chameleon, aka Skinwalker Ranch, To the Stars Academy, Mount Wilson Ranch, they're all connected. You've got Hal Putoff, Lou Elizondo, and Eric Davis in the next photo. Here's Bigelow, Tom DeLong, Elizondo all together. 
On September 14, 1993, Bigelow, Linda Moulton Howe, Stephen Greer, Lawrence Rockefeller, and a whole team of notable people were at the Rockefeller Ranch in Wyoming. The current owner of Mount Wilson Ranch, Jeff McBurney, purchased the property directly from Bob Bigelow, and he said that soon after, one of the Rockefellers actually came to the property and said they wanted Jeff to take him to see the portal. The Rockefeller Initiative included some major players. Here he is with an autographed photo with President Ronald Reagan. Reagan was announcing his Star Wars program, which included everything from MK Ultra to the MX Missile Program. Mount Wilson Ranch was a potential location for the MX Missile Site until archaeologists ran into a load of indigenous artifacts and multiple encounters with skinwalkers, the shaman, and even extraterrestrial encounters that began on the ranch. Here's Bigelow in front of the fireplace in the ranch, the same fireplace rumored to be designed by Howard Hughes himself, the same location we are researching today. Nids was actively researching at Mount Wilson Ranch, and you can see in the photos in front of the motel, there's Hal Putoff. Keep your eye on him because he is going places with Bob Bigelow, and it might surprise you where. Bob Bigelow, Jacques Vallée, and Hal Putoff are going directly to Skinwalker Ranch. Hal Putoff, Eric Davis, Eric Bard, and Brandon Fugel. There they are, standing at Skinwalker Ranch. Eric Davis was one of the original physicists and researchers supposedly conducting research at Skinwalker Ranch. Eric Davis has interesting connections to some highly public figures in the UFO community. Jeremy Corbell, Gary Nolan, and Gary Nolan is the Stanford research scientist who's been going on Fox News and the New York Post claiming that people who come into contact with UFOs and paranormal phenomena can have health effects called interference syndrome. Similar MRI brain scans have been conducted on my friend Chris Bartell while he was working at Skinwalker Ranch. If you're surprised where Hal Putoff is currently working, he is alongside Tom DeLong at To The Stars Academy. Here he is listed on the advisory board right there on their main website. And this brings us back to Mount Wilson Ranch. Here we are back at the hill above the meadow at Mount Wilson Ranch with Bob Bigelow, Jacques Vallée, and Hal Putoff. Hopefully all of this information comes full circle back to Mount Wilson from Skinwalker Ranch and you see the connected pieces. The big part of this that connects is Chris Bartell. Chris has worked at Area 51, the Nevada test site, Nellis Air Force Base, and over six years as a lead security officer at Skinwalker Ranch, where he was asked and tasked several times to conduct psychic experiments, including trying to levitate things and do remote viewing, similar to the research done at the Stanford Research Institute. The way that Chris Bartell was able to keep himself clear and his mental sanity intact was by spending his time with the dogs. Chris Bartell took me to Skinwalker Ranch personally and helped me meet the team, search for petroglyphs, retell stories and recount paranormal experiences that we've had with the team, and even do research and collaborations outside the ranch and beyond. We've been able to explore underground tunnel systems, conducting infrasound tests, and using EMF and radiation sensors in underground aquifer sensors and around Skinwalker Ranch, looking for the source of energy that might act as a portal to another dimension or a gateway that unlocks human consciousness. Chris Bartell and I are together now in the cave recreating these similar meditations and remote viewing experiments based on all of these historical connections and hopefully all of this makes sense now. Discrepancies even in the sound wave files that the Gateway Experience original tapes had and the current ones and then Brent has worked with uh, sound engineers and we've actually or he's actually crafted uh, a new version that's actually clean to use. Um, anyway, yeah. but the idea is it's a protocol, meditation protocol, a visualization system that combines ancient Buddhism with what they were trying to do, like making contact. You know? Is that recorded? Can that device actually tell if you're doing the protocol or not? Well, it can't tell exactly what you're doing. It can tell if you're in the brain state that you're, you're trying to get to. Um, so basically, the, oh. the, the state that we try to get to with like the, my product, the Terrascapes, the, the basic methodology is body asleep, mind awake. So that point where you're in the hypnagogic state, where you're just going to sleep, your body is turned off, and your mind is completely awake and lucid. 
that's where we want to get to. That's we can measure that actually with the EEG. So you can, and you call that the theta brain state? Yeah, it would be theta. So the the active working state that you need to be into to go out and get information and bring it back and be accurate with it, it's called the mental access window, which is about 7.8 hertz. It's a Schumann frequency. We believe that the, the resonant cavity frequency of the Earth is the actual carrier, is the actual Signal. conduit that you need to be tapped into to get information that's not mobile. In your head, like when you wake up, you're like, oh, i got to get to work, da, 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 and you have this whole dialogue and thoughts going on. But uh, Terrellscapes and everything that we've been working on the last couple of years is like a system where you clear all that out, clear your thoughts out, don't have all that mental chatter, but then you're also enhancing the experience by putting yourself in the perfect theta brainwave state for making contact you know, with other dimensions or opening up to clairvoyant possibilities or telepathy or all kinds of things. But then I we guide that with certain visualization steps, like where I imagine uh, going up through a room, opening a door, and going into a, a waiting room where I invite things in. You know, it's all like trying to use your subconscious to talk to something, you know, on the other side. And the mind to mind system enhances that entire effect of what you get back. What are you reading now? This is the infrasound. So we were measuring the, uh, Chris's uh, EEGs. This device was completely charged up before we came up the hill. And it died as soon as I put it on Chris about two minutes ago. It just died. It. So it's, it's fast died. charging, right? So but it's, it's a small it's battery, so yeah. it may charge quite quickly, right? Yeah, fast charging right now. Uh, so I turned that I turned it off, turned the dongle out, and I put the infrasound sensor on because I've got a, a theory, a hypothesis, that our consciousness informs these areas. If there's a field in this area because it's tapped into the Schumann frequency, the reason people see the ghost shaman, the reason people see things in these you know, special areas, is because the consciousness of people that were there before overlaid on top of them like a heart. Mm. And I thought that could possibly influence the infrasound, could possibly influence this frequency. And we're seeing exactly that with this trace where 7.4 to 8 is much thicker and much more active during the state than Carl and Chris were in their working state. You see more activity. And right when I would feel like I would think of Chris really solid, I'd hear him go, oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. It'll be, I think it'd be cool, man, it, yeah. to do the remote viewing, uh, you know, yeah. the, at the end, like, while they're watching. With everybody Because I was just, because I was also say. doing it, like, yeah. I was, like, you know, I was trying to meditate, just holding it there and also meditating. I think it'd be yeah. cool to see what they... It would be interesting if everybody saw similar. You know, and don't fake it either, just be honest. You know, there's nothing to eat to, you know? All right, here we go. <laughs> it's going in my ear over here on the side. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're doing EEG readings. I'm going to do a meditation here in the cave. Uh, what do you think? Should I should I just do um, a tarotscapes meditation and try to do a contact protocol? If you like to, yeah. I'm just going to okay, that we'll do that. That'll be cool. We'll see if anything make con makes contact. And what's cool is we're going to be doing it um, on the EEG machine, and uh, Lato's going to be filming it. So we'll see what the results are of my brain waves. So what is this going to capture? Yeah, this just captures. You'll see it's a brain, whole visual of your brain. Whole so visual of my brain. Give me that at the drop circuit. I'll be right. Maybe I'll I'm going to make you wait here in a second. Just hold it. It's all right. The price we pay for science. I know. <laughs> so like, look, does he, cold water dude, you are like now. Professor X, dude. There it is. Because I am like Professor it X. It wouldn't work as well on me because totally like, like Cerebro. I have too much in the way. I'd have to shave my head, I guess, to get That's like right. full on. So he's like uh, Beast or Magneto. Basically. Like the, the genius. Holy, like, beast. holy <laughs> bro. Okay, this is Carl's What, dude? No right way. Now. Okay, you guys no ready? Way, Carl, this is not normal theta activity for you, bro. <laughs> please get that really good on camera for me. Okay, you guys ready? I'm going to go Dude, in. it's like a super All brain. Right. Well, Carl, you here we like go. You got, should I go, go down Alice in Wonderland? Let me, let me turn down the intensity of this. Go movie. say hi to the Cosmics. Determine if there's any alien life around and bring back some secrets of the universe. Related to sound, light, and frequency. Go. <laughs> Hi. 
Can I put my hoodie up over top of it? You certainly can. I'm turning down the, the gain on all this. There's one rock going right on my tail. Okay. I'm going to turn down everything except the uh, we're going to see what his pure beta is. That's Carl's pure theta activity right now. see all the remote viewing activity right there. I see. Yeah. Right there. Carlos was lighting up right now there. Yeah, it's on the right side. That's right. That's the psychic ability right there. What's that? Receiving. Yeah, it's perceptive. That's that's the areas that are uh, receiving. Visual cortex, etc. Seeing visuals. Communication. It's 
missing communication between neurons. Yeah, that's, that's that psychic ability. That's something. That's he's getting something in. That's what the mind of mind that it does is it opens that up. That's why it spins in the direction it does. The mind element does that to, yeah. to open up that area. He's seeing something on the left side, getting an impulse on the right side. Yep. Very good. Yeah, you see that? Wow, he's lit up. See that activity over here? That's the right side. Yeah, that's that's his visual cortex. He's seeing something, hearing something. because he's getting more pinks and purples. He's coming back to an alpha. Oh. Yeah. There he is. You see, he's getting more pinks and purples right now. Yeah. It's because he's coming back to a normal, a normal functioning state. Okay. Oh. What happened, man? What was that? Let him give him a minute. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I have to record it. It was awesome, man. Dude, we're like, you don't, you don't remember hearing us. I don't talk. remember hearing you guys. Dude, talk. we're out here, and I'm like, and Brent's like, hey, man, he's seeing some crazy shit over, and he was whispering. Like, down. I have a, I have an awareness, like this. There's like a background, yeah. a bedrock awareness that I'm still sitting, sitting in the cave. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't remember raising your arms. No, I know. What here, I, was, I know. I raised my arms in the vision. Was I doing it in the cave? Here, yeah, you did it here. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Okay. And then you put your arms down. Because Brent comes over and he's like, hey. And he points me over here and we have it on film, you know? And he's yeah. like, he's seeing some he's seeing some crazy stuff now. Oh, right yeah. now. Your right hippocampus is lit up with oh, yeah. So you were in a state you were getting something in. And then your left visual system started lighting up like you were seeing a visual. And you were seeing something. Oh, yeah. Like, there you go. What'd you and see, the man? You would just light up. So, like hearing something. Did you get the answer to the universe? Light well, like last night. And that stuff? No, I, I did a gift exchange. Oh, cool. That's I a did a gift exchange. Like a Christmas style? Um, pretty much. Yeah. I offered tobacco, and he basically gave me a point, like a spear point, like a thing. He? Yeah, the shaman. So you yeah. saw the shaman again? Yes, sir. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The whole thing started. It was like, I was, uh, just went clear, did the, the whole protocol thing, you know, where I, anyway, long story, but I, so I go through my whole cleansing thing, then I open up 
and then all of a sudden I do the click out where it's like a blank spot and then it's like I'm an eagle flying over Mount Wilson Ranch and I'm like and I'm like flying up the meadow and around so I'm just like soaring like out of body you know like lucid dream flying flying over the canyon and up the meadow and then uh it's like I'm back in my meditation protocol. I'm counting like up to 12. You know, Brent knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, and then I go up to 12. I'm like, this is the, that protocol you were talking yeah. about to, to reach a meditative state. Yeah, to get clear and make contact and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, get into that right ideal state of mind with the beta wave. And then, so yeah, so I'm flying. And then all of a sudden, I, so I'm back. I count up. I go to my doorway, overlay the doorway. To the cave i have a blip back to this <laughs> repeated past life encounter thing that i've had a couple of times it's like this atlantean figure I what don't, we will get into that yeah. wait what are you talking about dude yeah. what no 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 this is the no, contact no, 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 bro no, ultra terrestrial go, that's okay no, there's what's the atlantean uh it's a thing. it's a figure from another timeline named ka l who was like me from another life or we have interactions sometimes like I am first person as him and other times he's doing all these other things but he's going into meditation chambers underneath pyramids and meditating to create energy that's supposed to balance out nature and help humanity and all this stuff and that was his job but I would sit face to face with this guy in meditation through like this veil and we would sit with our legs like in meditation style, across from each other, facing each other, and we would telepathically share our meditation secrets and what we did for our life, and even things like what I would do in my day-to-day -day life and what he did in his day-to-day -day life. It was like we were friends across space-time, kind of a thing. And you saw him this time? I saw, I, yeah. So when I set up the door, I overlaid it with the front of the cave, went in the room and invited someone to come in, He's who came, that's who came first. Yeah. Was that dude. Uh, cool. Kyle. Yeah, so he was <laughs> first. And it was like, ha, ha like this cool moment, you know, like I didn't expect him. Yeah. Right? And all of a sudden, I'm sitting literally like knee to knee with the shaman that we saw last night. Right. Face painted white. That dude, the same face paint. Sit, face painted white. Wait, what What so color? Did he, he have face white, paint on? White face and he had black hands like this. Yes. Black did black. he, did he have, I, mine had uh, the forehead on the top of his head painted red. Oh, wow. With like clay. This one, he had like, his face is white and he had two black hand marks like this. I saw the black hand paint too. Yeah. And he was pointing like this to three jagged big rocks. Three big rocks. That's but fascinating. But his face was white. And I kept, it kept replaying in my head over, like I'm, it was weird. There's a doorway in my meditation space. And then I go up to the doorway, but then I overlaid my visualization doorway with this doorway mm -hmm. and imagine opening it and inviting in the shaman. That's cool. And then all of a sudden I, I saw him standing there, the bottom half below his eyes painted white, white face, white face. same thing. And he goes like this, hands painted black top of his head from the eyes up painted red. No and then I see glimpses of him standing up at the cave, uh, sitting in the middle of the stone circle, all these places around in the, all over the ranch and all this stuff. And basically, and then back here, standing in the, in the yes. room again, just like, poof, 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 like flashes. Red on the top, feathers on the back, hands painted black up to the half of the forearms like that. And he's sitting straight face to face same thing telepathically and it's just like hey who are you who are you just like two guys like normal guys <laughs> you were just like, like who are you hey, yeah like, telepathically like hey man how you doing like like i found your cave <laughs> he's like hey you found my cave kind of a thing like that whole yeah. thing all communicating and stuff and basically um uh i he asked me like what are you doing here kind of a thing and i said we're here because your magic is real. That's what I was telling him. I was like, we're here to prove that your magic is real or discover that, you know? And then he like made me see what we were all doing. And then I was wearing this on my head and he goes, you're doing magic too. And we were like, ha ha ha. And we started <laughs> laughing at each other, right? 
So then I I do remember you like laughing. Like I remember <laughs> seeing you in there, right? In the cave, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what is he? What is he laughing about? Yeah, dude? It was I was like, like a funny thing. Like we had yeah. this joke where he was like, "How funny!" Like I, he was like, "What is all this?" You know? And I was like, "They're scanning my like my brain and everything." It was like this whole interaction. Like he was, and then this was really cool. I'm gonna try not to cry, but um, then it was like I put my right hand on his right shoulder like a masonic thing and he put his hand on my shoulder like this and we put our foreheads together and uh <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> and then i gave him tobacco with my left hand and then next to my hand he offered a like an arrowhead like a point or whatever like a hunting tool and then he put it in my hand and i put it in his hand and it was like we had this fellowship thing and it was like, I don't know, that was like, that was the whole deal. That's yeah. so cool. And then it was like, it was like, thank you, all this cool stuff. And then back in the cave. Yeah. Whoa. That was it. That was the whole thing. Yeah. You'd laugh and then it would be like, oh, she's seeing something funny. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's that's the difference cool. between neocortex and like, you said the right hemisphere. But then you said the neocortex. Is yeah. the neocortex no, I, no. in the right hemisphere? No, no I didn't I say neocortex. Uh, in one time, I'm sorry. I'm not. There was one time, yeah. I just didn't know the parts of the. I don't know the parts. Of no, the no, just the, the right, the right hemisphere, the right hippocampus. Um, that's what we have always found is. Um, that's what's. Yes. That's what gets stimulated when you're uh, having a psychic experience or remote viewing. That's and that's. The that's whole what point was of lighting that. up on me. Yeah. Oh yeah. We oh yeah. He's like he's seeing something, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I look over, and you're like, oh, and you're like. I was wiggling around and stuff. Yeah, man. We got it in. For a while, we had it to where you could see the, uh, you can see it, because like we got the video of your brain and you, so you can see like your brain activity in your face. So, really? Yeah, yeah, we'll be able to see it, I think. That's yeah. wild. The right side, Brent's like, hey, he's seeing some crazy stuff right now, and then, yeah, I look over and he's like snickering, or it's like arms I have my arms in the air, air. I have no idea I was doing that. I was seriously like, I was flying over the, the valley and all this stuff, and sitting face to face mm -hmm. across from the shaman or whatever and the half the time it's just like poof, 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 right in my face but yeah brent was recording it the whole time um pretty wild i'm still just trying to warm up and come back out of it but what what a cool place we're gonna hike back down the mountain now uh get warmed up after we do a, a clean uh infrasound test actually i think we got it all right yeah. we got everything we need Okay, cool. We're gonna head back down and get warmed up and have some dinner. Yeah, like it's your your old past self. And did he look like you? Did he have like a, no. a beard? No. No. What did he look like? No, he just looked like. A, Was he Indian looking? Yeah, a little bit. Not like stereotypical. Just like a. It was hard because he had face painted white and red. And His like face is painted, yeah. Feathers and stuff, and it's little like dream like a dream you know so i'm really, really trying to focus but there's a lot coming in it's like a whole thing so, so you don't think you didn't feel like it was your past life no. and you were like some comanche that's hard for me because i have like i'm kind of like i in philosophy and stuff i'm sort of a non-dualist so it's a little bit paradoxical where it sort of is and isn't yeah like, like who exactly are the other people in a dream if they're not really you, but they are maybe other entities, and so huh. it can, can be both. We just have to make our way down, but anyway. We are coming down, it's so beautiful. Look at that valley. Look at that view. Amazing. Amazing view. So beautiful. So we found these uh, lava tubes. Can you explain what these are, Carl? Yeah, they're just volcanic vents, tubes that come up out of the earth. They don't look like a lot. They also could be like test mines from early pioneers up here dating, but we got one right here, another one over here, and the ground all over is covered with just like baby powder, like ash. Yeah, it was like, it felt like moon ash or like something as you're ash, walking yeah. up. Yeah, yeah walking it's up interesting. Here. But all that ash could have come out of these holes that over a long time, maybe hundreds of years, since people have gone down in them maybe, they just like collapsed in and filled in. But the potential to be able to dig them up or see if they go anywhere or lead somewhere is pretty high because there's one there, one here, and I think there's like three more as we go down and they all basically lead from the cave, the circles, all the way down.
this kind of stuff fits with like what I was seeing with the mind to mind last night with him being in the tunnel system to get out of the rain and stuff anyways. It looked like it went down to a la lava tube. Or like a lava tube, yeah, like this or something, yeah. potentially. What does the set do? The set is the wood structure that you set up like a frame basically to stabilize the entrance of a tunnel or a mine or a cave, you know? And it seems like there's a lot of evidence of digging because there's rock like this laying all around that looks like it was dug, hauled up, and chucked out from inside. This is archaic. This, this is archaic, yes. Yeah, this isn't, yeah. Huh. Right? This is super old. There's no axe marks and on this. Over the mountain clear over there, there's uh, like five more of these. Yeah. Huh. One of them looks almost just like this, only the wood cribbing or the set is still almost standing up like an apron. Yeah, I saw the video. Huh. Yeah. So you think the whole mountain could have these like tubes running through it? It could totally have tunnels going underground that lead somewhere, huh. maybe into a chamber. I don't know. You got it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> what was that? It's breakfast oh. time up at Mount Wilson. Uh, could be gunshots. There was gunshots this morning. We heard no. prop Probably Adam. There was a sonic boom right above the ranch. I saw the cloud. Just now? Because I was out there sitting and I heard a lot of them. Maybe it was hundreds. I, I was looking up earlier and there's some that look like a, a puff with like a streak behind it, like a jet oh, yeah. flew and that, broke the sound barrier right over here. Yeah. Today the plan is we're loading up. We were going to go to Area 51 and do a bunch of CE5 like investigations there, but We've been reading, right, Chris, that yeah. the, the FBI just busted some guy and they've been raiding his houses in Reno and around and stuff. So we're gonna go by the little alien, check some stuff out and go to the black mailbox and then probably just sneak back to my house and go do Magic Mesa and other stuff rather than push our luck, right? Even though Chris knows all the guys out there. Right? Yeah, make a few phone calls. <laughs> make a few phone calls, yeah. We could try, we could try. try, we could try, but I don't want to get in trouble. It seems like around. seems like a hot topic right now. These so guys we're, are trained professionals, they mess with right. my friends. Are. We're just kind of packing everything up, taking one last look at the place, grabbing some pictures, having breakfast, and we're gonna hit the road. Next stop, we're going to Area 51, the uh, Magic Mesa, maybe Warner Valley, the petrified dinosaur tracks, and maybe even a slot canyon with some petroglyphs that I've never shown anybody before. We're in the infamous shaman room on the bed where Bigelow was sleeping and claims that the shaman woke him up standing next to his bed at night, right? When I sleep in this room, I feel like I'm falling through the bottom of the bed. Here we are. This is the gift shop near Area 51. We're at, uh, yeah, Grim Lake Road. This is where you come here and up at the black mailbox where you're supposed to park to see UFOs flying around. So we made it. We are at the Little Alien Inn. 